Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I can start, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, Dr. Janardhan Ganga Tulasi, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? <laughs> Fine, sir. <laughs> so, we met in Tirur uh, with Shobha, madam. You surprised uh, on our birthday by bringing cake, you and your team. It was very great occasion when we are in SSM Polytechnic in Thiru. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, uh, and the organizers, uh, organizers of this uh, program, and my dear participants, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, we're all making not only the uh, students happy, the teachers happy, we were, uh, I was in, in Trivandrum yesterday to solve the problems of our uh, teachers, to make them delighted and joyful. Uh, we had a very good meeting there and it was very fruitful. Uh, thank you for the support. See, in the present, uh, say, advanced uh, curriculum, learning process, either difficult or require modern technical or scientific or physical inputs. In faculty, the topic of art of joyful teaching, I think it is very much relevant and apt. Now the role of teacher has totally changed to various roles. Uh, like a facilitator. So it is uh, very important to make the teaching process is more cheerful fruitful from the both the sides that is from the side of the teacher and uh, in the angle of students as we polytechnic teachers are handling adolescent group of students having multifacial variants in terms of the uh, psychological emotional and social aspects uh, let me see, uh, an American psychologist, you know very well, Thomas Hart, consider the adolescent age as the age of storm and stress. So to tackle the students of our system in the right path and make them a successful individual in society is a tedious task. Hope this three days activity program will help the teaching community to be an efficient and joyful teacher. And we know uh, Dr. Janardhan sir, he was with us uh, for, a, for a one week program in SSM Polytechnic College. And we know we are, we were, we are all his students, an efficient teacher. And he is the, uh, I know, you know, he is the in charge of uh, international affairs, center of international affairs and uh, uh, the curriculum planning design. And all these things he done, I think he's, um, you know, he's a remarkable and, uh, you know, anytime we talk about NATTR, his face will come to us. So, and he's subject is problem based teaching i think right so i'm not uh, extending anything more uh, i uh, conclude with the words uh, say teaching is an art how to teach is more important than what to teach so thank you very much thank you sir uh, over to you. Thank you, Abdul Nasser, sir. 
Now I would like to welcome Dr. Janardhanan Ganga Tulasi. He will be sharing his views on problem-based learning. Dr. Janardhanan Ganga Tulasi is the head of Center for International Affairs and Center for Curriculum Development, NITTR Chennai. Dr. Janathan has over 18 years of research, teaching, and consulting experience within the broad fields of civil environmental engineering, engineering education. His research expertise includes technology enabled teaching learning, assessment and evaluation, development of MOOCs, accreditation, academic quality framework academic auditing, learning spaces, blended approach, active and experiential learning, sustainable development and education, environmental remediation, solid and hazardous waste management and landfill engineering, and life cycle assessment and sustainable construction materials. Dr. Janardhanan has coordinated more than 20 international training programs and trained around 400 international delegates from 68 different countries from all around the globe. Dr. Janardhanan has received fellowships and awards, a UNESCO invitation to a Asia Pacific Regional Seminar on MOOCs for Higher Education, Institution of Engineers, uh, India Young Engineer Award, American Society of Civil Engineering, uh, Illinois Section Geotechnical Award. Uh, so he has uh, received uh, numerous awards and recognitions. We are very happy to have you as a resource person. Over to you, sir. So please unmute your Thank you, Madam. Thanks uh, for the invite, and it's my pleasure. I need to place on record the, uh, the perseverance and commitment of my Saji sir because uh, uh, he was keep on uh, uh, making it effort to make the art of joyful teaching into a really joyful event. Uh, because sometimes when we go to some countries or some different place, we taste certain food. After tasting that fruit or food, anything. We wish to bring the same thing to our family. Let them also enjoy the same fruit. And uh, I need to uh, record this, uh, Professor Saji. Uh, he has enjoyed, but what he wants to do, he wants to make the other people in the ecosystem to enjoy the same thing because it shows that he had a joyfulness uh, by giving to others, sharing and caring. So what he has enjoyed, what he has come across, because he was structuring said, this program, whom to give, because he had some rapport with Professor Tulsi Madam. As she said, they, 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 everyone, because he personally crafted this event uh, to share. Maybe he was sharing the happiness, what he has experienced in life to the entire community of Kerala teachers, especially that I need to thank him. And um, I really admire uh, for his uh, effort. And today morning also he called, sir, 10.30 session, can you join? And he has sent the link, I didn't look into the link, and then 10.30 once again. So it, Tells a commitment what he possesses to the event. And uh, the joyful event, as Professor uh, Nazir Sir was Abdul Nazir Sir was telling, Nazir Sir was telling, it is a passion-driven field, sir. It is not something which you cannot uh, uh, teach them. It has to be driven from inside. To make it from inside, we have to touch the affective domain. Teaching is not something cognitive or psychomotor. Everyone who have to possess knowledge, they doesn't need to be a good teacher. Even you can see, if you go, go and ask someone the address, uh, some learned people, they may not show the address out. Nowadays, we are asking Google Map. That is different. Suppose if you want a direction, even the local fellows, they will be very passionate enough. Sir, go life, life, life like that. The way in which they commit, it's very difficult, uh, different. So basically, the teaching is a passion-driven field. I really admire a few members of the Kerala community because especially the polytechnic system where I have come across really admired like Nazar Sir, SSM Polytechnic Thirur, I have observed and Francis from who was previously in SATTR. So Francis, Chandraganta, Madam, everyone. I've seen several people who really committed and to the core. 
so today topic is basically to focus on a problem based learning what do you mean by problem based learning let me share the slide let me share the slide okay problem based learning and what exactly we mean by problem based learning is it something new or something old uh, basically if you see the genesis of problem based learning they claim it is started from the field of medical professionals they started using the problem based learning during last pandemic not last pandemic the current pandemic last year 2020 in the month of july we were organizing a special program to vardhaman mahavir medical college new delhi so around 140 doctors i have trained so i was conducting a one week program on how to teach online programs and what are the different techniques so at that time we were discussing about how the problem based learning could be thought through online scenarios especially the problem based learning basically it structured what it exactly it means it it is a teaching method where the complex real world problem has been put to the students it is where it promotes the and motivates the students to learn the concept. As I told you in the beginning, overt learning, the joyful of teaching, basically will be joyful when the joyful of learning takes place. So overt learning, why we want to have overt learning? Because basically by observing teachers and attributes I learned, even if you come across, I hope everyone are teacher, when you started adopting the teaching methodology, obviously you might have adopted the teaching methodology which your best teacher adopted in your during your study period so some teacher would have motivated you some teacher would have impressed you a lot you try to emulate certain attributes of those teachers so basically it revolves around promoting the student learning of the concepts in the pleasant manner if you observe if you go to any uh, house or any neighbor's house anything always the kids or students they want to exhibit the skill set Uncle, I know how to do this skill set. You see, I, I know this one. I know that one. Everyone, all the individual human beings are really happy to exhibit your skill set. But when the teachers conduct assessment to measure the skill set, then they find it difficult. Any individual, if I know anything skill set, if I have unique skill set, I always wish to exhibit to others. That is the nature of the uh, universal nature. Because... Uh, but when it comes to assessment to identify the individual skill set, we are finding it difficult. What is the reason? So as usual in this lecture, content expressed are purely my technical perspective. It does not represent the organization to which I am affiliated. What exactly you mean by the, uh, the, the uh, uh, problem-based learning? Before understanding the problem-based learning, let me put an insight about outcome-based education if you remember outcome-based education the fundamental is the learning is fixed the learning time varies the learning is fixed the learning is fixed as a teacher i fix the curriculum and the content this is the learning which the student should possess okay learning is fixed but the learning time varies. let me take if i want to teach how to drive the bicycle or if i want to teach how to drive the car some people will readily quickly adopt the skill but some people will take more time but the learning is always fixed. What the learning is fixed, you need to drive individually and following all the basic rules and tenets of the driving. But the learning time varies. But in the case of a problem-based learning, you can observe. You can observe, you can observe what exactly it means, what exactly it means. Suppose if I drive a line, this pencil will take less time to reach here. But whereas, this pencil will take more time to reach. This pencil will take more time to reach. This pencil will take relatively less. But the line to be reached is fixed. It's already fixed. We cannot change it. We cannot change it. But the time taken varies based on the individual perception. And we have to give some breathing time, and but we have to bring everyone to the same level. Even though we call, we have a prerequisite level, entry level is fixed, but we have to acknowledge there exists an individual difference, always exists. Individual difference always exists. How to acknowledge the individual difference is the need of the hour. How to acknowledge the individual difference is the need of the hour. So you have to remember in the outcome based education, the learning is fixed, the learning time varies. And when the learning time varies, how best I can infuse the problem based learning? Because 
problem based learning generally it motivates the students to seek out a deeper understanding of the concepts it makes the students to make a reasoned decision and to defend them because he is going to work on the problem he is going to find a solution when he owns the responsibility he know how to defend it that is obviously you can see and it incorporates a various component problem based learning it is not as such i have to connect to whatever my previous learning has taken place that is the crux because i cannot give a new problem which the person doesn't know anything i cannot ask him to work on how to drive the flight so if you are using mobile phone i can extend some other features and i can ask him to work on it so the previous learning it matters a lot but it is a multi stage project which you have to remember sir, which you have to remember which you have to acknowledge which you have to acknowledge so Hassler, come on. Professional development program. Problem based learning has been an integral part of the 21st century learning. Because nowadays the information is plenty. You remember, information is plenty. If you come across, you can take any students previously. If the student is having any problem, what he will do, he will come and discuss with the teacher how to solve the problem. But in the current day scenario, the internet is available. Why I need to ask the teacher? I myself can find out. You can see anything. Even I was working on it. One of the hostel, uh, I was making a visit last week to the hostel. One student was opening the, the mosquito bat and he was repairing. I was asking what you're doing. No, no, this mosquito bat is not working, sir. I'm checking it. Okay, you should throw it and buy it. You know why I have to throw it, sir? All the parts are good. I have to check it. What is the problem? Then he, how you are doing, whether you know, no, 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 sir, I have just checked YouTube. There was a problem. He works with the internet. Information is available. He works. He disbandles. He finally find the, found the battery is a mistake and he went and he replaced the battery. Now it is working perfectly. So the current scenario, the current scenario, the students are perfectly ready to take risk, ready to take venture into new web. And especially the skill sets are very good because information is plenty. As a teacher, our role is to streamline to the correct information and have access to the uninterrupted access to the right information. That is the important aspect, sir. So when the students are faced with solving an ill structure, open-ended, messy problems, they are more pushed to think critically and work collaboratively. If really completely messy problem, they are not living. I have seen when a rheology of the concrete problem was given to my student, I have told this is the problem you solve it and it was a completely messy problem but he worked with some people in a collaboratively found what uh, uh, additives i have to use and everything and finally he made it and he got because he worked and now he got a japan fellowship and he has gone to, he is going to go to phd in december 6 all we say everything got so they are very much clear and clever so netter chennai supports a problem based learning and this program is basically to provide uh, the classroom experience in your district so this lecture basically uh, focus on how to design the problem based learning curriculum so basically we are we will cover various aspects of problem based learning what exactly you mean what is problem based learning essential elements of problem based learning learning design what principles you have to design and how authentic assessment is going to be with the case study we will just find out so ultimately the learning objective is to need the problem based learning to allow the self led learning and self determination among the students as i told you earlier and once again the director madam parliament question yes madam janardhan madam yes madam Yes, madam. Moon, moon, there are more people coming. Madam, PM and in Tilo, one more program, madam. RP is coming. Madam, Tilo, come, madam. Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi, National Mission Program, madam, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Actually, from one, madam, one, madam, madam, mentor training program, madam, madam. Or Sunday crowd is a massive training program. After RP is called, then our NRC declare an approach for passive. Or our Sadar Ji crowd under our Chennai ki. After program, what is our program? Tour five lakhs. Why not?
Extremely sorry, I just keep it uh, for because today we had a parliament question was there. That was a problem. So that is the reason our director called. I was to reply. Okay. Quickly, I will tell you five PBL design programs are there. What are the characteristics? We will look into it. What exactly we mean by PBL? Okay. As you all aware, learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of the activity of the learners. And basically, what exactly you mean by problem-based learning is some real-world complex problem I'm going to tell to the students. What is the reason? But he has already learned certain fundamentals. He has learned certain fundamentals. I'm just going to con connect it to the real-world problem. Let him try to provide the layer-world problem. Because as you all know, you know there are several initiatives you, 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 uh, from the polytechnic system I've seen. Real-world problem, for example, Climbing the coconut tree. I have seen one of the when we came to visit to Kerala, I have seen one institution they made automatic how to uh, climb it very superbly. They made it. So this is a problem which we face, but it has been given to the students to work on the problem, which basically provides them to enjoy the learning. That is there because when we given some problem instead of routine based assessment, these students get motivated. Yeah. That is advantage. That is a real advantage. Learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of the activity of the learners. When it wants the activity of the learners, you have to remember it is impossible to redesign students to fit into a system. Because I cannot redesign a system for the students. But I can redesign a system for the students. But I cannot make the students to fit in because I cannot make a students redesign the students to fit into a system. This is our system. You have to redesign. You have to go. No, 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 not like that. I have to design a system for the students, which they will be free, stress-free. You know, we are calling stress-free, cage-free egg or cage-free hen. All those things we are seeing in the market. A very relaxed manner, everything has to be there. Because the chemistry of the body it matters a lot when you take any fruits or any any item, food items. So PBL, what way it works out and what are the ways and means it works out. And let me show you a scenario here. This is what we practice it. This is taken from one of the uh... So, uh, continuing with the treatment of single variable searches. You now look at the Fibonacci search method. It basically works on the Fibonacci series. If you recall, in last class, we wrote the algorithm for we wrote the algorithm for any number f of n in the Fibonacci series. The first number is one, right? One. So this is what we, we cover now. We take any subjects, we do immediately the derivation, everything. Because this is one way of making the students to learn. Yes, of course, they will learn, they will enjoy the subjects. That is nothing wrong in it. Let them enjoy, let them give the video, we can give the video, let them learn, and let them enjoy. But instead of the same learning, if the learning, because there are different types of the PBL means, Problem-based learning. There are some scenarios we call it as a project-based learning. In such situation, how to work and how to go about it. If you observe the problem-based learning or the project-based learning, the scenarios, what we have to observe is how the critical thinking skills are going to get infused. How the problem-solving abilities are going to be. Because when a problem is there, we are so much, uh, our uh, system is designed where we will try to work in a very faster manner to provide a solution. And where we will also have a good communication skills. That is the reason 
I always argue last week also, one ten days before when I was discussing with Chandragantha, Madam, I was telling. So we were started giving a communication skills, soft skills, everything. Why? Why? What is the reason for giving a communication skills to the students? If you ask someone a question or about what is Darcy's law, defend Darcy's law. If the student is not in the position to defend, immediately we thought, no, 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 no. He is from Kerala. He is from Tamil Nadu. He, he doesn't know in English. That is the reason he is not in the position to defend Darcy's law. Let him teach uh, English so that he will be in the position to def defend Darcy's law. That was a mistake because as a regulatory authority, ACT should have taken a different stand. But what happened? They started enforcing more communication skills. Soft skill one, soft skill two, soft skill three. All soft skills came. It is good. But you have to remember, if the students really understood the concepts, the language is not the barrier. Let it be Malayalam, let it be Tamil, Kannada, or Telugu, or anything. He will be very fantastically, we can explain the content. That is important. Because you can see our ancient people, they in, in terms of sign language, in terms of pictorial representation, they were explaining the concepts. So it is not the question of language alone. It is a question of communication coupled with content understanding matters a lot. So the problem-based learning really plays an important role for them. So what we did, Imagine we made a scenario. So we want to teach the problem-based learning in a different manner, with content different, manner, especially the Fibonacci series. So instead of normal routine classroom, like teaching them a problem, what is Fibonacci series, what is the problem? So we, because we can teach the content, just kindle the thought of the students then ask them to find a solution. We can provide, a, ask the question, why, how the leaves have been grown? What angle the leaves are growing? If the leaves are growing in a, some angle, the sunlight will prevent the leaves from falling off because we need photos. Yesterday, there was an interview for one of the uh, one college. So I was just asking, he, did, he said, I did a PhD in the area of uh, uh, water quality. I have did this many samples, everything he told. I told, I asked one simple question. How the dissolved oxygen comes in the water? What is the reason of dissolved oxygen? How the oxygen comes into the water, dissolved oxygen? You just take it. I asked him to take a distilled water, very pure distilled water. Ask him to measure the dissolved oxygen. And groundwater, which has not been aerated, measure the dissolved oxygen. Lake water, dissolved oxygen. How the dissolved oxygen will be there? What is the reason for it? But he did PhD, everything he was claiming, I am from this institute, National Important Institute, all, all good. But sometimes he doesn't know the fundamental. Like, I, I am not finding it fault with the individual because our system has been engrossed. Because you have to see, when the lake profiling, if you do, the top DO will be more, bottom DO will be less. Because of the algae or the leaves which is growing, plant which is growing, due to photosynthesis, it releases oxygen which get diffused in the water. That is the reason the dissolved oxygen will be more in the lake water. If it comes to open surface contact or aerated waters, obviously dissolved oxygen will be more. If you go deeper to the lake and measure dissolved oxygen will be less. Or where the algae amount is less, the dissolved oxygen will be less. So if they know the fundamental reason, and it is easy for us to decode. Because you can see, I've seen some doctors just by touching the below to the rip of the body, they told, okay, you have a malaria, you have a appendicitis. Because I, one of my colleagues, kid, he was having vomiting, everything. We took to different hospitals. They did a took a CT scan, everything. They don't know appendicitis. Sir. It is normal food poison. He took a cake on birthday. That is the reason. So, but he was tolerant. He was keep on vomiting and it was, we took a very old uh, aged doctor. We went, because someone told you, go to this doctor, he will be very good in diagnostic. He didn't do it. He told only these two fingers he has used. He was pressing on different places. He told this is appendicitis. Ask him to operate immediately. Then we asked to scan. It was but it was an inception stage because the diagnostic by the ancient old doctors, senior doctors, I really admire. They touch with two fingers, three fingers. They are the CT scan. They are the X-rays for them. But how it came? The problem-based learning really plays an important role in the medical field. Similarly, for engineering field, we started because we were trying to show, make some videos. I will request the participants to watch this video. Having its sleep grown one above the other, there is a big threat for the life of the plant by such alignment of the leaf growth. The growth of the new leaf over the old one will act as a barrier for the sunlight falling over the leaf grown below them. Insufficiency of this sunlight will cause its deficiency in the process of photosynthesis, affecting the food preparation of the leaf. 
due to the curtailment of chlorophyll, leaf will eventually die. Then how the leaves are survived? What is the alignment of the leaf flow? What happened? Close to 1.618. If you divide any larger number, the answer will be 1. Divide the neighbor is 3. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Addition of the last two values of the series will produce a new value. And the series will go on infinite. And this is called as fibrosis series. There is another interesting factor about this series. If you try to divide the neighbor values in a descending order, the value will be very close to 1.618. For instance, if you take 55 divided by 34, the output will be 1.617, very close to 1.618. If you divide any larger number, the answer will be 1.618. The value of 1.618 is called as golden ratio. To find the angle of the leaf the 360 degree is divided by the golden ratio 1.618. The answer will be 222 degree. This 222 degree can also be said as 137 degree, where the 137 degree is called as the golden angle. Now let's try to arrange the model leaf in the golden angle, which we achieved. The arrangement of the leaf will not overlap to other, giving a space for the sunlight to fall over the leaves below them. If you try to explore, the most plant around us are the trees or the flowers or the fruits are mostly grown in the same angle in the fibrosis series. The fibrosis series is also called as God's fingerprint. The fibrosis series is not only limited in the growth, it's also in many major issues. To understand it, we should draw the fibrosis series in a geometrical structure. So let's draw a square and take it as one and another one next to it. The length of the two structure is two and square is drawn. And the total length of the three structure is taken as three. And again, a square is drawn. And the total length of the structures are taken as five and a square is drawn. And similarly, eight is achieved. If you draw an arc and connect the opposite sides of the each structure, a spiral is achieved, it's called as fibrosis spiral. From the shape of the snail shell, satellite image of a cyclone, and the shape of the galaxy, we can find this spiral. So why we are, this is the reason, because when we teach the content in a perfect manner by taking a nature, emulating the nature, what it is there, then if you make them extended work, give them extended work to the students with the problem, the student will be in the position to easily solve the problem and he will be happy to find a solution. In turn, it improves the problem solving abilities and communication skill. So even if you see this is in Africa, you remember he was looking into the different aspect because he cannot produce economy. It was not good. But he was trying to make a solution. Okay, you can just uh, look into it. Uh, okay. so. So, the, uh, Deepak, Kant, sir, can you mute your mic, sir, please, sir? Deepak, 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 you can mute your mic, sir. Okay. So, the main, uh, this thing is, you can see, even you can see there are some issues. For example, there was a child, a kid in the Africa. Uh, there was a forest, the lion was uh, keep on coming and taking all their cattle in the night time. So their village, their routine of the youngsters is to take care of the cattle in the evening time, night time, so that to protect them from the tiger or lion. So he made a device, a battery, normal, uh, this thing. And each in turn, it was attractive and it attracted the, uh, and it distracted the lion. And the lions were not there. So eventually he tried to make it for all others. 
So the problem, he knows the fundamentals of light. He knows the fundamental of flickering, how it distracts the lion. So there was some problem and it has been given. So in the problem-based learning, so we can remember, you can give a real world challenges and developing a solution will be the highest demand. Because the current day scenario, I don't want a student who's going to make it because previous era was knowledge acquisition era. Then knowledge deepening era was there. Now knowledge creation era. I don't want a student who comes and reads then provides a solution. I want the people who have really provide me a practical solution which will be of the highest demand. So if you see the scenario A, the teaching style and learning style, student enrollment technological usage was entirely different. The teacher simply teaches of the what is Febloid series by correcting routine book method and talking head method, what we call. And the student involvement is relatively less because we are not asking our students to give all the trees, are they going to have a same angle, Febloid series? Are they some plants? Because monocordillate, dicordillate, and we have not studied. So how the leaves are in a different pattern, how it works out. We can ask the students to see how the technology usage is, was there. The scenario A is entirely it was different. The scenario B, it was entirely different. So PBL was first introduced, as I told you, in the University of McMaster University, in the medical, medical campus. They were trying to apply the knowledge and solve the problems to the new world situations. The new world situation, they were trying to make use of it. And it is a best practice of pedagogy and how it works. Because basically they were trying to use the uh, it for the uh, uh, medical field. So problem-based learning is nothing but a constructive pedagogical approach. What we meant by constructive pedagogical approach? Already the base is created. Over the base you are creating. For example, when I purchase a new mobile phone and uh, troubleshooting because I have used one mobile phone, I have no other. So I'm going to construct the new knowledge or based on the existing knowledge. So it helps us to have a strongly uh, connected uh, uh, content. So if the new knowledge is, if the base is not proper, the new knowledge constructing is going to be difficult. So what exactly we have to do, we have to organize the curriculum and instruction around it carefully. That is the reason when the curriculum revision committee, when it came, I told to Chandrakanta, madam, so there are certain fundamentals it is not going to get changed in the each content. For example, soil mechanics, the fundamentals are going to be the same. Mechanics, engineering mechanics, there are certain things. So first, let first two units or three units, let it be the same throughout the year, no problem. Throughout the four, five years, no problem. But the next, how the curriculum is going to be instruction, which is going to better because it is not the uh, curriculum that is going to make wonder. It is how the teaching learning is going to implement the curriculum matters or not. It is not the quality of ingredients. Quality of ingredients really enhance the taste. But if the quality of ingredients are wonderful ingredients and the wonderful chenna is being made, uh, 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 kadala curry, one of the good kadala is made, kadala curry. But if we don't know how to make kadala curry, what, what is the need of uh, having a good kadala? So I should, the good quality is needed to enhance the taste. But if it has not been implemented properly, then it is not good. Ultimately, it is going to structure around the the methodology what we are going to do. One such methodology is a PBL. It acts guided by the teacher. The teachers will act as a cognitive coach because where you should remember the difference between the coach and the teachers. Because sometimes you will find the goodness of the students and you appreciate. You are a well-wisher. But your coach means what is the hidden thing which is available in the field. We have to bring it and make it to the wide world. That is a coach, real coach. So you are a cognitive coach where the students is going to work collaboratively because you are not going to work on it. You have seen this is a problem. You know this is a way which you can solve it. You are going to identify the students who possess a skill set to uh, uh, work on this problem where you have to work collaboratively to develop a critical thinking, problem solving and all the identify the problems, formulate the hypothesis, conduct research and perform experiments and formulate the solutions. Basically, where we are going to work on the real world problems, real world problems. So that is the uh, advantage of the problem-based learning. So the problem-based learning, to put it in a simple definition, it is a instructional method that situates the learning within the context of the problem, which learners solve by developing both content knowledge as well as the cognitive skills.
so how it works but you have to know the difference between pbl problem based learning and project based learning they both have the same acronym but it is different project based learning and problem based learning project as a teacher i know what is the solution which is going to come whereas the research that supports is only the content and not only the content but it also focus on connecting the content to the context that way you have to remember problem based learning the teacher defines a problem teacher identifies the action steps student creates a product whereas in the project based learning they work in a group but here the optimum group is less than 3 less than 2 less than 5 less than 3 less than that is optimum student defines a problem because i have given the project he defines a problem he defines the action steps student creates a solution it is meta cognitive project based study so the teacher adds act as a guide in both the situation both the situation the student centric learning there is a real world connection active learning and self and peer assessment is also going to be there which is a part of nep nep 2020 clearly tells there need to be a peer assessing and there need to be a self assessment the para they told 360 degree of assessment self assessment peer assessment and also the teacher to the to, uh, teacher self assessment peer assessment teacher assessment and parent assessment all complete set we are going to do so knowledge is not merely transmitted from teacher to students but rather it is constructed by the learner that is a, they own the responsibility because it is not transmitted to the from teacher to students but they are going to rather it is going to constructed by the learners so as i told you it works in higher order skills it is not focusing on knowledge or remember or understanding it focuses on apply analysis and evaluation and create so that is the higher order domain which will focus and that is a major focus of the problem based learning and here we are also going to couple with the socio emotional skills because sometimes it failure might come it doesn't mean it always lead to the success we also find a way how it will not work out that is also possible in problem based learning in such scenario the social emotional skills of communication collaboration reflections are equally or equally valuable we have to think are equally valuable so problem based learning real world frame of reference and a student can imagine own life with their future that is the stanford university definition so students makes a great attempt to understand and remember when they see connections between the material they study and their own life you remember when they see to the real world right it retention is more retention is more real world problem and always the learning takes place by connections for example to put it in a simple manner whenever any new learning is taking place we will not take new learning as a new learning we will try to connect or uh, uh, connect or engage it to the already experienced part for example uh, i came to uh, kote once the first time in 2010 uh, lavan i came to kote they gave me palamburi palamburi they gave me. so palamburi i never tasted that was the first time in 2009 at 9 or 10 i at 10 or 11 i don't remember so at that time they gave me a palamburi so when i tasted the palamburi i never tasted the palamburi as palamburi i was trying to connect it oh it looks like a bajji what i takes in chennai it looks like bajji tastes like bajji looks like bajji but it tastes it is sweeter and it is so so i should know how to connection between the two things that matters a lot and pbl answers the questions by placing learning in the context of real life and students acquire new knowledge and skill set that is highly relevant to the life so let me see the steps of how to do the so what we are the five essential elements which we needed is authentic context collaboration ill defined problem self determination and reflection these are the five major aspects which you have to remember in the case of a problem based study five essential elements authentic context <coughs> collaboration everything so first you have to identify the choose the <coughs> choose the uh, choose idea central idea or concept or principles that is always thought on a given course or a previous course something which is taught in a given course or a previous course and then think of a typical end of a chapter problem or assignment or homework that is usually assigned to the students list the objectives 
you have to define the objectives and then you have to connect it to the outcomes. You have to remember objectives and outcomes are not one and the same. They are different. Objectives toward what you try to teach. Outcome is what you try to expect. So my objective is to teach how to drive the car. Outcome is how you draw the car without making any accidents. That is the outcome. If you are making, if you are not driving properly, then the objective is not achieved. Because attainment of the objectives are measured only based on the outcomes. That way we have to remember. If the outcomes are uh, visualized in a better manner, then attainment is being connected. So that is advantage. So attainments are connected, well structured with the outcomes. That way we have to see. So authentic context. What we mean by authentic context? As I told you, connecting to the real issue, connecting to the learning issue or challenges which is meaningful to the learner because there are a lot of issues are there, but I have to connect it to the meaningful to the learners. But you might have seen, there was a, how the ATM vending machine came. ATM vending machines came, you might be knowing. ATM machines of the bank. So if you see the inventor story, actually, he wants to purchase some gift to his wife on his uh, on her birthday. So he went to the bank, but the bank was crowded and after lunch he came, by the time it was gone to close. So he had a money in his bag, but he was not in the position to withdraw when he is needed because of the crowd, everything. But he was wondering, uh, if we go to the chocolate shop, in the, there to the shop, if he puts a 25 quarter, and uh, then automatically the uh, 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 candies were coming. So when the automatically candies are coming, why can't my money, let the money back be corrected, let it connect it to my account, let me have some card or chip, which has some secret. So previously, the pins were six digits when he was designing the ATM machine. Later on, when it designed, and the, he was able to get the money what he has in his account, account balance. So he was trying to uh, take the money and try to solve the problem. So basically, what I'm doing is authentic problem we have to give, authentic content. So the problem of a real nature, which he has experienced, and which you can connect it to the Real knowledge what he has studied in the course that is very very important so that is the need of the real world problem real world problem or real world relevance then learn and why why it is needed because research suggests that problem is based on an issue that is important to learners if you're not taking a real world problem suppose hypothetical imaginary problem the student will not get motivated deeper understanding and knowledge literature because yesterday when i was conducting an interview for that uh, Candidate to finish a PhD for a job, I was wondering. He did a PhD, he did a lake sample, water sample, models, and everything. But certain reasons why this has to be there. For I was asking, in sea water, you do a pH. How the calibration of the pH you will do, electrode. He was simply asked for the ASTM procedure, I, uh, international procedure. I was wondering, okay, good. You're telling APH procedure, but what way you will do? But the reason is not like the reason is. Connecting the authentic context which contributes to motivation. If you learn properly, it contributes to the motivation. Deep, deep understanding and in turn knowledge retention. Because problem scenarios have a real world frame of reference. They are centered on the event so that student can imagine in their own life, in their own features. They can have a role play. So in turn, it provides highly relevant kindles the interest of the students so that you will have a deeper understanding of the content, increase the retention of the new information, and it also contributes to the eliminating ever-presenting questions. Because this was already existing as a question, so which has been uh, helped to solve it. So that is advantage. That is the advantage. That is advantage which you have to remember. What do you mean by collaboration? Collaboration, when I told you the smaller groups is always advisable five less than five because if you make too much big group then the problem based learning is not going to solve the problem so what when we mix a group we have to see how to frame the group also the proper mixing or proper combination is needed it should not create a trouble to anyone you have to remember so working in a true group it is very very important it distributes the cognitive load for example when they're trying to make some recipe what we do some will cut the vegetables, some will grind the masala. Finally, everything has been play, put together and finally the food is ready. Similarly, the segmenting. The segmenting principle plays an important role. 
So cutting a big apple into a smaller pieces or tomato, I can say, because tomato everyone will be happy. So uh, how to cut into a smaller pieces. That is where segmenting principle plays an important role. So the collaboration basically remembers each one, what they have to do, we have to define properly. And the each individual outcomes need to be connected to the major outcomes that also need to be defined properly. And ultimately it has to get connected. So how the collaboration need to be there, distribute the cognitive load and negotiate a shared understanding. You remember, it, we are not finding who is correct. We are trying to find what is correct and how to solve it. That is not issue based, not on the individual base. By drawing upon the different strength of the members. Suppose if one person is very bulky and he is having a good stamina, let him grind the masala. Grinding takes place not of effort. Whereas one is good, then okay, let him cut the vegetables. Okay, he is very weak, let him wash the vegetables. So identifying the different strength of the members of the group will also get promoted in failure. So where you understand the gaining of the student strength and the weaknesses. Where you provide an opportunity to have own skill and you also have an existing skill how we have to support. So the synthesizing, integrating, it is an important development step in the higher cooperation. That is collaboration. Third one is ill-defined problem. So what do you, I told you ill-defined problem? The whole philosophy of problem-based learning depends upon the what situation will exist in the problem. Where unstructured to reflect the idea that assignment should be should not be a linear problem with any single correct answer. Real world issues by their very nature, missing complex. Because you can see any uh, graduate attributes, complex problem, complex problem, they would have put it for undergraduates, not for polytechnic, but for undergraduate. So in that case, you have to be true to open to the complex problem. But where we have to also accept there is an open solutions, open-ended, multiple solutions are possible, open-ended. Multiple solutions are possible. So defined problem. So essential elements defined problem. So if you see in problem-based learning, ill-defined problems, as I told you, it requires more understanding of the problem that is initially available. Contain multiple solution path. It may not be only one solution path. Change as a new information is obtained. Purview students from making a right decision. Generate interest and controversy and cause the learner to ask questions and are open-ended complex through beyond recall, contain content that is authentic to a discipline. Correct content that is authentic to a discipline. That is very, very important, sir. So what are the active learning and self-determination? What way we have to work on it? Yeah. Yeah. using and active learning and uh, self-determination if you the kind of pedagogy because dr dinesh came and he was also delivering some kerala lecture for sat india so active learning and self-determination because you have to remember it is not a passive learning it is active learning because active learning results in retention of the country, more involvement. I am not like passive learning is wrong. Passive learning is certain because it is not a question of receiving. It is a question of fetching the knowledge or trying to fetch the knowledge. That is very, very important. It comes only because of research. It comes only because of reflection. It comes by discussion. It comes by processing, analyzing and experiment. So that's the way it, it gives. That's the way it works out. And reflection and metacognition. So relate the new knowledge to the prior knowledge purposefully. What we mean by metacognition is knowledge about the knowledge. The knowledge, existing knowledge, you should know how it works out. So to put it in a simple manner, first step, what this idea is, choose a central idea or a concept or a principle that is taught in a given coursework and trying to make them to list the learning objectives and how to work out this problem. Second, connect it to the real world context under understanding and develop a storytelling aspect of end of the chapter problem. And third, the problem need to be worked out in the stages. So what is the first stage looks like? What open-ended questions can be asked? What learning issues will be identified? What open-ended questions? 
how will the problem be structured how long the problem be and how class how many class periods will it take to solve the problem because as i have only i cannot have multiple time i have only 40 hours of session or 60 hours of session so i can take problem based learning but i have to think in this problem based learning how many objectives of my instruction could be covered of my uh, polytechnic syllabus will be covered and how much time it takes place that also we have to what resources will the students need it because when i teach problem based learning it is not something pen and paper. It needs some resources they need. What they have to do. What end product with the students will the students produce after the, at the completion of the problem? That we have to see. So the teacher needs to guide a detailed instruction plan because we need to have a proper instructional plan of defining the course. So what exactly need to cover in the beginning, what in the middle, and what is the how the reinforcement need to take place, how the quantification need to take place. This has to be ordered in a perfect manner. The teacher guide can uh, provide a proper planning and options for cycling through the pages of problems, intervening various modes of running. It is not a simple mode of running, it various modes of running we can do. The final stage, final step will be identifying the key resources, identifying the key resources and how the key resources plays an important role. How many students will want to limit the research through internet or will be important to guide them to library because sometimes these days the kids are very much particular in doing the internet base they're not trying to venture beyond the internet so what happened we asked the pg students to go for internship we tried one guy told no 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 anyway i'm going to middle east for after my father is there i'm going to job there why i should go to it i said you go and take fetch job job i told let me work in a project of yours sir i have you have a laboratory I will work on a uh, real-time world problem so that I can also get a complete insight about the problem. I told, okay, it is not, no, industry also, they're going to give the same thing. They're going to give a problem and they're going to work. So you got the problem from the industry to solve it. Let me work on the problem. So can you provide me internship certificates? I was wondering, these days, the kids are entirely different. So they are uh, different, but they are really venturing, but they're always trying to provide a smart solution out of it. That is the understanding which I have. So the reflection of metacognition, as I told you, metacognition plays a large role in the problem-based study. So we have to see how the evidence needs to be taken place, how it has to be structured. So the method for distributing PBL falls under three closely related teaching techniques. First one is case studies. Second one is role play. Third one is simulation to find a various scenario and find which scenario it is best. That is the cause of residue. So all the PBL basically revolved around three different things. One is, as I told you, case studies, role plays, and finally it goes to the it goes to the simulation. So simulation plays an important role to comprehend certain concepts because let him pray, let him try, let him go to the field and measure it, how it works out and how it varies. That is very, very important. So it is not hypothetically we cannot work. We have to work in a in tanto with the field. That is also important solution. Sir. That is also important thing which you have to make a note of it. And case studies are presented in the students in a written form. The case studies are basically presented in a written form. Role plays uh, of students to improve is seen based on the characters described in the case studies. And finally, simulation involves either computer programming. Basically, we use computer programming or any other simulation which will which will work regardless of the technique whatever we use so that is the way the real world problem works on it so that's the way the real world problem works on it so a teacher will act as a facilitator in the problem based on you have to remember you are only going to scaffold them when they go for a mistake we have to, because my uh, advisor always tell phd uh, uh, advisors are nothing but like a doctors you are pregnant and as a doctor, if you go, you will see based on this is symptom, this might be the issue which you have to think about it. And based on this symptom, this is the issue. That is the way we put it. So as a teacher, as a teacher, my responsibility, you have to remember, it has been restructured, restructured in the case of a event, restructured in the case of a event that we have to remember. As we are only purely a facilitator, facilitator, how to make them individual knowledge to enhance to different skill set because it is not only one domain it is any domain they can go but they have to define clearly 
otherwise what happens it's not going to create an impact it is not going to make any changes that way we have to be very very careful sir. so there exists a co close relation correlation between the constructive learning environment and five elements of ppl as i told you earlier the five elements of ppl what are the five elements of ppl Uh, so we have to remember what are the five elements of the ppl what are the five elements of the ppl i have told you clearly authentic content collaboration ill defined problem self determination and reflection self determination and reflection if these five problems are structured accordingly then it works out very easy because it is not something hypothetical problem some content for example when i want to teach compaction when i want to teach compaction what we did we did a problem based learning we did we gave a problem based learning so that they will work on it we made a bond to one batch we gave a same bond to compact with sand and clay and this is the area which i have to compact the vehicles are moving several times if i try to if i try to fill it with the proper material later on due to the heavy vehicles the undulations will be less there won't be any deformation so how to go about it how to compact it so the students will try to provide a solution because they are on very clever and clear in providing a optimum and we are providing a very judicious solution but as i told you the prerequisite is needed because content basic you cannot work on problem based learning the sorry knowledge acquisition you cannot work on the problem based learning you cannot basically you can work trial at least in the knowledge deepening but for knowledge creation one of the good expertise tool is learn problem based study problem based study that is really really, really a good tool which you have to remember because it has its own uh, fundamentals where it creates a, it creates a, a, a this thing in a better perspective that way you have to remember so the first one is authentic context the second one is collaboration third one is ill defined problem which forms the crux of the treatment because if the problem is not defined properly then it going to create a problem ill defined problem the problem what you are going to define so which is going to connect the past and the future so if they want to live in the present you have to connect them the past and the future with a proper uh, problem that is very very need of them and in turn self determination self determination finally it has to lead to the reflection it has to lead to the reflection reflection of the thoughts and reflection of the learning is very very important it helps the students to comprehend in a better perspective it helps the students to comprehend in a, a better perspective that is is a need of it it helps the students to comprehend in a better perspective that is very very needed so reflection is very very important item reflection is very very important item so which we have to remember or which you have to appreciate appropriately uh, so how to how, how, how best we have to do it what all the ways and means which you have to do it it really plays an important role it really plays an important role okay so the five steps is authentic context collaboration ill defined problem active learning and self reduction and self assessment and reflection if it is taken into consideration appropriately then assessment is going to not going to be a big issue is it clear sir is it clear yes sir yes sir yes oh 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 sanjeev sir yes sanjeev sir so if you have any questions any doubt you can ask before going to the next part because we have up to 12:30 we have, before going to the next part if you have any doubts or any questions you can ask me the first off then accordingly we will work on it sir you have any questions or any doubt so now we can take a problem we can take a pro problem and we can work accordingly eh? we can work accordingly so that it will be uh, useful to you guys so we'll work accordingly okay so the main reflection of this problem based learning is as i told you the five elements are very very important so accordingly we have to take it prepare and reflecting upon the current role as a teacher and necessity of the people to shift towards practice as a facilitator with the aspects of a to provide your transition and to develop 
so that is a part one of the lecture sir part one of the lecture first lecture i was trying to provide a views about what exactly we mean by the problem based learning problem based learning that was the focus that was the focus now we have to focus on assessing the problem based learning assessing in the problem based learning how we have to assess that is very very important so if the assessment is not proper so then it is going to create a issue for us so how the assessment need to be there and what are the ways the assessment need to be structured so that way we will see the next part and before looking into the assessment we also need to look into it how you have to design the problem based learning how we have to design the problem based learning as i told you ill defined problem ill designed problem so let me look into how to design the problem based learning is it clear sir so let me go to the next slide so that you will get an idea of how to design the problem based learning how to design the problem based learning okay <coughs> so let me share the screen while the screen sharing okay screen sharing elements of problem based learning we have discussed discussed okay here share the screen Introduction we finished it and this also we have completed. Okay. What happened? Okay. Here it is learning decent, problem based learning, and decent. How we have to do with the decent aspect. So, one terminology which I have used always is ill defined, ill structured, ill structured problem is a terminology which we are always using ill structured problem in the problem based learning what you are going to bring out you are going to make out a thinking and skill students the outside world so before that i will put a padlet wall i will put a padlet wall so that i can take out input from the participants i can take input from the participants so that they can give give us an idea they give us an idea how 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 we can restructure the how we can restructure the things how we can restructure the things i am just sharing the wall i am just sharing the wall i am sharing the wall you guys can uh, place it to it so, so. okay i hope it is screen is visible i don't know whether okay sharing only the powerpoint screen just sharing the link. I'm sharing the link in the chat box. Chat box is to all the all the people, all the attendees. I'm putting it in the chat box. So Jana classroom at AP. I'm sharing the this thing. So I've shared the uh, this one. I've shared the discussion one. So what subject you are handling? And how you, you I am handling X subject, and this is the problem which I I put it. Can you make a double click? For example, I am handling a engineering graphics. I will let it be mechanics of soil. Mechanics of soil. Is it you are preparing for one of the industry? I will include. Case studies related to runway construction or we could include or we uh, or uh, include the storm water drain to decide in because like that i'm defending some problem so which because there are some uh, uh drain water is there because of a heavy rain in your area the water is a problem and clogging is there how to come about it how we have to connect it to the pre previous concept as i told you the first and foremost step is you have to have the authentic content okay 
Second, we have to connect it to the ill-defined problem, the problem which is really have a practical solution, which needs a practical thought process. So let me put it in the um, second category, ill-defined uh, problem. And uh, you, you have to work on it. Now, I request the participants just to double click on the link, what I've shared in the uh, uh, chat box and try to connect your problem and how you are going to, this is the content and this is the problem through which I'm going to teach it. So can you make it for a few, five minutes? This is an activity, activity please, can you make it? Five minutes, I'm giving a Padlet wall. Can you guys kindly make it please? Five minutes, can you make it? Participants, just click on the padlet wall. You can write, this is the content I'm teaching and this is the problem which I'm planning to associate to teach the problem-based learning. K kindly put it, kindly put it, then we'll fine tune it. Please, please, I request the participants, just double click on the padlet wall. Are you guys are there? Are you guys there? Are you guys really there? Okay, no one is typing it. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Uh, link is not showing in the chat box. No, no, I put it in the chat box to everyone. No, no, it is not there. Now also I'm putting it. Once again, I'm putting it. 11.45 to all attendees I put. Maybe I'll put it to all panelists. All attendees have put it. Now I put it to panelists. Now, now it I is okay. Now it is here. Okay. Just double click it and put it, sir, please. Just double click. Okay, okay. Uh, two, three people are working on it. Okay, good, 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 good. Good, really good, really good, really good.
But only two people are, uh, both of them have written soil mechanics, civil engineering, maybe. So, no, no, I need some case study. I am going to give this problem. For example, uh, the cut volume fill, cut volume fill problem is there. I am just going to give the cut volume fill. Uh, this is a place which the, okay, I, uh, I have, a, you remember any filters, any filter media if it is there. I, I, I can make a filter of unique sand properties. So I have a site which is site A. This uh, asks the students to prepare the drawing of their own house. Okay. So for problem is, <laughs> it is good, very unique, yes, easiest problem. So break uh, their dream house. Okay, their dream house or they wish they want to make their own house. Okay, good, good. Very good, sir. Very good, very good. Very good. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Good, sir. Good, good, good. For example, if I have a, pop, a soil with a grain size distribution curve of this much, I have a soil B with a grain size distribution of this much. How I have to make it? How I have to make it and how I have to do it? That is a problem. Study of a Pradeep, sir. Soil structure analysis of soil nutrients. Study of agriculture failure in the river banks of Kerala. Okay. During the... Okay, okay, okay. Here, more than a knowledge acquisition, we try to work on knowledge deepening and knowledge creation, sir, in problem-based study. Already they might have the knowledge, but we, we are focused more on the knowledge uh, deepening and knowledge creation rather knowledge acquisition. Knowledge acquisition is not the, uh, it is basically for the knowledge creation and knowledge distinct, knowledge uh, I can include the study of database of the project of students of the department management system, which includes student activity, which are familiar to them. Okay, database. I can include a case study of design of database of, for a project. Okay. For which the students include student activity, which are familiar to them. Okay. 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 Of course. Remember the knowledge uh, uh, database, uh, this thing we are morely, mostly focusing on knowledge cre creation. Auto engineering lab. During lab, our students can check the performance of petrol and diesel.
embedded system to design an automatic attendance system. Okay, okay. Automatic attendance system already existed. Is that there was a problem. The students are coming late. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, you can tell the problem. You can provide the problem. This is the problem. For example, uh, uh, other day I was I gone to one institute. I forgot the institute name. Okay. Uh, uh, you have to, uh, uh, it, it, you will get fine tuned, sir, because uh, especially the, pro the project based uh, learning, what is the difference? As I told you, the students define the problem. As I told you several cases, like an ATM vending machine, all these things are the problem which the teachers some individual has faced. For that, they were trying to provide a solution. So, what do you mean by ill structure problem? Ill structure problem, we have to remember the knowledge is flexible knowledge, effective problem solving skills, student oriented directed learning skills, effective collaboration, and intrinsic motivation. So, the first, when we design the problem, we have to remember we also need to look into the limitations of the PBL. What is the limitations of the PBL? So the PBL first pro among the medical universities, I have told it's used. And it is only gifted for the homogeneous students. For example, in the problem-based learning, I cannot make the... Some people, I don't know, someone is speaking. I request the people uh, mute themselves plus, please. Okay. Okay. So it is based for the adult learners and it also for homogeneous gifted students. For example, in the problem based learning, the skill sets of the certain students, highly skilled students, will join together, where the swim or sink effect will be more in the problem based learning. What do you mean by swim or swing eff sink effect generally we turn? If everyone of no knowledge, they all swim together. But if you are not of proper knowledge, we will sink because of that. That we have to remember. Because of some people who are not doesn't possess competency, we might sink also. So we have to think about whether it is a swim effect or a sink effect. So it also depends upon the different types of learners. There are models of facilitation. There are methods of assessment. So which results in the problem. So there are some limitations which you have to remember. It is not 100% everything. It's like a palsibo, but everything it will be there. But we have to remember about the limitations also. What are the design principles? First, when you design the principle, it should be a flexible knowledge, effective problem solving skills, we have to think. The student directed learning skills, effective collaborative skills, and intrinsic motivation. That is that. So what do you mean by a, a, a principle? In a com contemporary society, especially the workspace, how it is work. So you have to process and store information more deeply. So you can draw the information on some occasions which could be used for transferring for higher order domain. 
as a competent authority you will be required to retain and apply it at correctly so the application and retention also plays an important role rather than other things so it has more flexibility So that is one thing. And second thing, research suggests that when compared with the students instructed in the traditional classroom pedagogy, the people who studied in the PBL curriculum are more likely to identify the problem, include problem finding as a step which presented a novel ill structured problem. That was we are studying. And second thing, it also helps them to develop essential skills, particularly the kind of thinking, the skill structure which is needed. And it also provides a more uh, a rational way of, of identifying the information, identifying needed information, and developing a detailed research plan for the group. So, designing aspect plays an important role. So, self directed learning promotes it because it is not where we get stuck, where we do the self learning. As I told you, uh, uh, we had a problem recently. Uh, the when I went to the uh, uh, place, you, there was some crowd the, because of the pulling the Fitbit watch strap has got. I had other strap, but I don't know how to fit the strap. But this was a problem which I had. But immediately, I it is a self direct learning. I took it to the YouTube and I was finding it how it works. How that guy was working on the bat the same manner. So self directed learning. So the collaborative learning here in a design principle second aspect is a collaboration. The first aspect is a Flexible knowledge. Flexible knowledge, as I told you, the knowledge is highly flexible where you don't need to remember everything. You need to know where to find it when you need it. That is the skill set what you need to provide. Where to find it when I need it. I, I need to know oh, this is the way which I can solve. But doesn't it, I have to keep everything in my memory. I need to know where to find when I need to solve. That is a flexible knowledge. Second, as I told you, problem solving skills. It is not the question of your competency alone, you should also look into outside the box. Outside box thinking is also needed where you have to solve the problem. So actually how it promotes because research studies, problem solving skill comes only when you work or enhance or different time set if it works, it could be there because some people are very assured enough in identifying the skill set very, uh, very nicely. But Others, they have to more by practice, they will try to identify, uh, they will try to enhance that skill set. That is self-directed learning. As I told you, you should have an innate, intrinsic motivation of self-directed learning. So you should not always expect the teacher to try to teach you. It is up to you to have a self-starting skill. Because as Sarah was telling, one of the Sarah was telling, draw your own uh, 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 home plan. Because how to construct your own plan, you can dra draw your own house plan. So what happened? Self-directed learning. You may not know certain details, but you have to learn by yourself so that you have to make that. This is what the presentation finally needed. This is what the objective which you have to attain. So you have to augment the skill because yesterday the, the, I have given one of the students lake front development. So I used some 3D animation software to provide a perspective for me how the lake front will be looking at it. So this skill set has to come basically by yourself augmenting the skill set, self-directed learning. And finally, collaboration. Already some people might have used it. So you have to collaborate with them so that you have to develop a new thing. What we call it is a cooperation. Cooperation and collaboration and competition. There exists a competition. There exists a cooperation. There exists a collaboration. So collaboration should lead to the competition where you have to cooperate and communicate and compete with the, compete with the competitors. So that is it. Not all groups will collaborate well, but where the teacher role is, as a teacher, your role is to facilitate, which is crucial in demonstrating the best practice in resolving the issues, negotiating the issues, 
and act as a diplomacy. You remember, you should have a very good skill set of negotiation. You should have a good skill set of resolving, and you should also be good in diplomacy. So this plays an important role in providing a consensus and providing a proper scaffolding and group reading so that you can support towards collaborative learning. Set. So the traditional intrinsic motivation, as I told you, it is not a traditional uh, pedagogy focus on eccentric motivation. Someone from outside will motivate, but here in this case of problem-based learning, it is an intrinsic motivation. Some people I have seen, they didn't go to the lunch for or skip the dinner or they will work extended time in the uh, 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 lab for working basically of intrinsic motivation. There, uh, when we have intrinsic motivation driven field, so you will never find, uh, you will never feel angry, you will never feel asleep. You will try to feel how to achieve the objectives or outcome, how to attain the outcomes. So intrinsic motivation basically conversely sees how to build upon the things that students is inherently interested, thereby encouraging the learners to uh, learn, learners to uh, uh, engage, naturally engage in their learning. So that is very, very important. The students engage in problem-based learning or learning facts and concepts, the skills needed for critical problem solving and self-running. Critical problem solving and self-running that we have to remember, sir. That we have to remember. So this is the way the five uh, design temple. For you, how you have to reflect is there are numerous studies are going on, which is not significant because when you give a problem, uh, as I told you, problem based learning, you cannot give a same variety of problem of higher level problem to entire class batch. So as a reflection thought, when you're identifying a problem and giving to the students, you know the different segment of the students. You know their creativity potential. As a teacher, you might be doing. So identify the cluster accordingly, give the problem and give the problem to each to each in each group and finally holistically you take the problem into bigger group for example as i told you for reflection when you want to make a wonderful thali wonderful food uh, lunch uh, so you ask certain students who are very good in cutting the vegetables grinding the masala and making it everything together and serving it together so the individual problems are being the individual group has been identified with a set of problems they will be given and they will be made to work on it and they will be finally made to achieve it. That is a very, very important point when it comes to design of the problem based learning. Then comes assessing the problem based learning. What way we have to assess? Because as I told you, assessing is a complex situation in the problem based learning. So if you teach students learn how to drive a car by practicing a real car, in a professional opinion, that after a theoretical multiple choice assessment, the assessment also uh, provides a road, road worthiness of the students. Because everything I cannot obtain from explain, because if I teach you how to drive the car, ask him to explain how to drive the car, he will tell, oh, keep your leg on the clutch, slowly release it, uh, uh, use accelerator and brake, all the statements he can give it, but it will not help us to make him to do, say, whether it is a road worthiness of the students or not, I don't know. Because I cannot resort always to the uh, uh, multiple choice question. I cannot always go with the theoretical aspect. I have to have some way of assessment which really move away from the traditional assessment to find it for the problem based learning. So, what they are generally telling, traditional assessment are generally ineffective for use in the problem based learning. So, don't try to in use the traditional assessment the, which are relatively ineffective for the problem-based curriculum. So what are the, pro as I told you, there are two co common themes that occur are traditional methods basically focus on knowledge acquisition, which is entirely inappropriate. We are not, in problem-based learning, we are not focusing on knowledge acquisition. We are focusing on knowledge, deepening and knowledge creation. So learning to learn. It is not the question of comprehension or knowledge. It is a question of application, analysis, evaluation, and creation. So where we have to have an authentic learning activity, authentic learning activity need to be there. So if authentic learning activity is there, it will not misalign the and disturbs the student water. So learning to learn is a important. Item. So assessment that is beyond factual recall to the application of skills and knowledge to the complex situation. That is very, very important. So where is zinc in the periodic table? When the world war started, what is the population of Paris? 
earth mass is height of sea and this tower what are the prime numbers these are all very simple questions which anyone can tell but problem based learning we are not going to ask such questions we are going to ask more than that beyond that what are the things which you are going to ask how we are going to ask plays an important role there we call it as a authentic assessment we call it as a authentic assessment how the authentic assessment plays a important role how the authentic assessment plays a important role that is the need of the hour uh, so uh, what are the ways and means which you can work and how it could be worked we can see one by one and we can see the criteria what it could be used for the purpose so authentic assessment context of the assessment it should be realistic activity because when i am saying building the house so you should not build the house which is not a uh, uh, hypothetical case so we have to uh, uh, build a house uh, which is going to be the real face it should be co context of the assessment and it has to be a realistic activity it has to be there which is, should be performance based and cognitively complex nature second the role of student because when it comes to the problem based learning we are not going to identify the it grew by how to identify the individual also matters a lot so how in terms of identifying individuals and obtaining the justification also plays an important role and scoring what should be the scoring criteria it should be used for developing the students which is multiple indicators we have to use it. so that is that so later on if you observe later on if you observe the process of our friends so it really instead of knows knows how how he does that is the reason so outcome refers to what the students can do focus on the ability and ability of the students to demonstrate both the content and new application of knowledge as the student progress and how the student thinks and content refers to what the students know so in this model instead of focusing on knows knows and does we work on the different strategies and criteria these domain learning do not occur as a separate process but interrelated mutually support the development of a given competency so basically it provides a evaluate mastery during the pre-bill program so what are the uh, things which you have to remember so assessing what the students knows the teachers are always well acquainted in what learners knows but we have to identify how to get what really the learner knows it should not be based on the multiple choice question or close-ended question it has to be based on the formative plus summative because in problem based study if the problem finally you might have failed but to provide a solution but the process what he has involved it need to be appreciated it need to be acknowledged so how to cluster the project identifying the equipment identifying the items and identifying the problems and finally we can uh, uh, give some weightage so it is a continuous weightage rather than the one time stroke that you have to remember and how the students think because in problem based learning we have to remember in a simplified it is a divergent thinking and it is also convergent to be one another because sometimes you are thinking itself is problem and how you will get a solution so it also should assess the process but whether he made a proper process to do it for example if you want to make a, 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 a If you want to make a l l l lassi, okay, let it be buttermilk or lassi. So I need a curd. So if I make a curd, I'm thinking that, okay, anyway, I need to go in to make a lassi with salt. Let me boil the milk and let me put salt and let me put all masalas. That, then I will put it in the culture. It will be yielded because suddenly if I need anything out of the product, it will not work out. So I should know it is not the question of how you are trying to provide a solution what way you think to try to provide a solution that is also matters a lot that spectrum works how the students should in order to think solve problems both divergent thinking and convergent thinking is required divergent thinking or basically critic creative thinking essentially a range of strategies that generates a multiple possible creative solutions so it gives a generated spontaneously and anything goes judgment free environment critical thinking basically works on convergent thinking is critical thinking Conversely, does involve judgment, reasons, and logics. So we have to see how the creative they are, how critical they are. So it involves judgment, reason, and logic. 
and how it provides a solution. This aspect also need to be taken into consideration when you are trying to provide a solution. So creative thinking, convergent thinking. Creative thinking is divergent, critical thinking is convergent, and metacognition, generating possible options, generating many types of options, generating a novelty of a possible option. Analyzing components and finding the relationship in a system, making an inference and interpretation of the data, and comparing and contrasting options and evaluating the relative worth of the options. And finally, monitoring one's own thinking, evaluating one's own thinking, and revising one's own thinking, decision, and strategies. This is the aspect which you have to think in, in, in terms. So, assessing process basically occur different type of thinking to be assessed identifying the appropriate sources of performance evidence and provide a practical solution. So what are the different type of thinking to be assessed? So we have to see backward planning how it is going to be there. So if are you uh, assessment teaching, so you should be uh, exhibit analysis, how you are weighing and evaluating, how you are going to interpret the information and generating novel ideas. In authentic assessment, curriculum play planning begins with the learning objective assessment which we always know because based on the outcome, we are, we are going for a backward design or backward problem uh, planning. So in the instructional design comes later where how we will know what they, when they are, have been identified. And if you have objectives for a students, you have to remember, will drive the design of the assessment and the design of the learning activities, developing critical thinking, reasoning and argument and justification skills. Identifying appropriate source of performance evidence. So where you will be trying to identify the appropriate source of performance evidence, where you will be observing and interpreting behavior during the learning activity. When the learners participate in thinking, it is undoubtedly an internal and personal process. So where you have to work accordingly. So produce a practical scoring system. So where you have to work on a practical uh, scoring system, which provides a more aspects to aid in submit to checklist. Basically, we have a checklist. Okay, these are the items you have used. You have seen how to make it. So, if the checklist for any rookie, rookie, rookie means any uh, probation officers, probation uh, person. Uh, so, they, when they, when the rookie, when they evaluate, uh, they, they have a checklist. They have a checklist and they evaluate in detail. So that way it works out. So you will have a portfolio base of assessment or formal observations how they are doing in terms of structured questioning, uh, asking them how the process went and how it, how you have came out this process. Why can't you try a different solution? And finally, reflective feedback. If these process assessment is taken into consideration, instead of a routine traditional assessment, then the problem-based assessment will going to be a easiest and simplest task. That way you have to remember, this is going to provide a better solution. Sir. So use the assessment framework Portfolio to systematically collection of the event by teacher and students because what sort of effort they are doing, how the improvement has been made, how the process is taken into consideration, how the achievement is made. Having problem connecting to the network. Why would happen? It is not the question of connecting to the output. It is question of connecting to the outcome. So you have a gro growth portfolios, showcase portfolios, and evaluation portfolios. So where you have to see how the shape the growth or change over the time to develop process skills such as self-evaluation, goal setting, to identify strengths and weakness, to track the development, to showcase an year by accomplishment to prepare a, a sample of best paper uh, uh, employment and to uh, document achievement and to document progress and to place students appropriately. So the observation should clearly find their behavior, their thinking and the perseverance to solve the problem. So as an external observer, we should uh, begin whatever you missed, whatever you have seen both positive and negative reflections and what is the significant difference in your observation and how to reflect upon it. If you make all this observation perfect, then the reflection of you in implementing the problem-based learning will not have any difficulty. It will be an easiest task. But once you started implementing it, you can appreciate 
the way in which the student is going to work on it. So as a teacher, I request the participants to uh, uh, try to identify a problem. It is as I told you, it is not if you are asking the people to over draw the uh, uh, map. So you should see how uh, drawing the map. It is not the easy task. They might be knowing already AutoCAD. So the growth portfolio, how it is there. The showcase portfolio, because they are not only the drawing. So how they are presenting, that is that. How you are going to evaluate all the portfolios, you, if you make it perfectly uh, in order, then the, the implementation of the people, it is not going to be a difficult task. It is going to be a smooth task. So that way you can appreciate it. So that is the, the thing. So structured question is needed. So our final output is going to be portfolio assessment and performance assessment. So you should know the difference between the portfolio assessment and the performance assessment. So which basically is trying to focus on the output and in turn, which is going to measure the outcomes. Okay. So case-based assessment, how we are going to do the group presentation, how we are going to do, how we are going to do the portfolio-based assessment. So we are going to see the students are presented real life scenario and real client to manage. So asked to work with the real life contacts and scenario, and they are going to work with evidence, not only the evidence, gathering of evidence, and their thinking and progress just or for showcasing. And portfolio should include reflection. Criticality from students often provide the best source of evidence and creating the portfolio plays an important role. Trial jump, triple jump, how they are doing. Individual pre presentation, tripartite assessment. That is a group submits a report which they see a mark. Individual submits a piece of work, what they research. And individual writes the amount of group process that link to the, each theory of the group work. And finally, we will try to see the evaluation and everything. If you make this assessment, it let it be norm reference or criterion reference. But we have to look into it. Traditionally, we look go for a norm references. But in the case of people, we are trying to put a criteria. If they meet the criteria, then it is a proper work to take into consideration. So with this, uh, I try to make a, a assessment within the people list. What percentage the student project will based on the group performance versus individual performance? What percentage will be based on the assessment of product or assessment of process? What weightage will be given to peer evaluation and a self evaluation? And how to incorporate into the group work and how to feedback on the product and how to feedback on the process? If you make the feedback on the product and process, then this will be a easiest to task. If this approach is followed appropriately, then there is no clear cut, uh, uh, there is no uh, doubt the people will be implemented in a perfect manner. But you have to remember, there is no clear cut guidance for people assessing. As a teacher, you have to know how the content has been acquisition, knowledge acquisition has been thing, how the learners think, what learners to do to meet an outcome. These are the three things. As a, a judicious member of the teaching community, you should be in the position to evaluate appropriately, sir. And thank you very much. If you have any questions or any doubt, you will you, you, you are uh, 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 free to ask me for the next five minutes. Based on that, we will wind up the session, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Dear participant, the session is up until for discussion. Dear participant, the session is open for discussion. You can unmute your mic and ask your questions or write your question in the chat box. Attendance and feedback link is posted in the chat box. Sir, sir I have a question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir uh, I want to know what is the difference between flipped classroom and blended classroom. Uh, can you uh, explain the characteristics of both? Yes, Ayrton. Flipped classroom is a subset of a uh, blended classroom. Blended classroom is a overall uh, uh, system. And a flipped is a subsystem of the blended. 
the, from the term blended itself you can identify you are mixing going to mix more than one methodology so what sort of methodology we generally have contact met method or online method so when you make combination of contact plus online in a perfect proportion then it becomes a blending it becomes a blending that is a blended approach so in the blended approach we have a different methodology for each item okay so one such methodology is the flipped approach. One such methodology is the flipped approach. What do you mean by flip? Flipping is turning upside down. A flip, you are turning going to turn upside down. What we are going to turn upside down? Our teaching methodology are going to turn upside down. So how we are going to make the teaching methodology upside down? What we are doing generally in the classroom, we are delivering the lecture and students are reading at home and writing it in the examination. There is a less timing for questioning and clar getting clarification of what they have thought. So in such situation, the flipped classroom, the normal teaching is made in form of a video or some material they have to read, come to the class for more discussion and deliberation. That is the flipped classroom. But I will tell you flipped classroom, what is the problem which they are facing? For example, the theory goes with the different uh, people. For example, Professor Barry Spotter tells them, Flipped classroom is it is very difficult to implement in a country like India. Why we have to be difficult? Because the students are having as six subjects. Six subjects, everything he has to go and read it at home and come to the class for discussion. Then what will happen? He has to spend more time night throughout the night he has to study. Morning only he has to come and in the morning in the office he will sleep, college he will sleep. So there has to be some rational in the flipped approach they are telling. So they are clustering the flipped approach depending upon the content. As I told you, there are different content for learning knowledge, learning acquisition, learning deepening, learning creation. Certain content I can read by myself. For example, all the important dates, factual knowledge, visual identification, I can just look into before. I can come to the lab. I might have seen in the video, ah, this is a cup. When I come to the lab, I can easily identify this is a cup. Because I might have seen a similar cup in the yesterday's night video or sometimes casually I would have read in a period of time. It is not night, it is over a period of time. So, but when it comes to how this cup manufactured, how if the cup is not holded properly. So, there are principles, procedures you have to teach in a different manner. And for skilled perpetual motor act, for example, in a video, I am telling tomorrow how to, you are going to make a, a raita. Everyone watch the video and come. So everyone watch, they cut onion into pieces, tomato into pieces, everything. They are coming to the exam uh, uh, classroom. They asked to cut onion. What happened? They cut onion into two pieces. They curve, kept to the curved portion on the top and they are cutting the onion. Very nicely it goes. In tomato also, they, they do the same thing. Cut the tomato, keep the curved portion on top. If they cut tomato, it's not easy to cut on the curved portion. You have to keep the flat portion. Moreover, tomato cost is very costly. Nowadays, a lot of mims comes in tomato. You remember? 140, 160, a lot of people, politicians, everything they are making yesterday at times or an advertisement also was there. India today, some joke was there. So, it is the, we have to see which content. Are they going to learn the factual knowledge? Are they going to learn the visual identification? It's going to be principle concept rules or it is going to be the procedure. It is going to be the metacognitive activity or it is going to be the affective domain. So, based on that, we have to do the flipped and blended approach. Dear yeah. participants, any questions? Any questions? Hello? Your participants, you can share your views. 
feedback. Okay, so here we are winding up the session. Thank you, uh, Dr. Janardhanan Ganga Tulasi. It was a well planned and well executed session. You have uh, presented PPT and uh, everything, it was uh, perfect. Uh, and we could know more about uh, problem based learning. Thank you. On behalf of uh, GPC Parental Manna, I would like to thank you. Thank you so much. Dear participants, we will join you at 120. We have a validatory session at 330. Thank you all. Then attendance and feedback link is posted in the chat box. Thank you again. We will join you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.